So you wanna make a 3D render, but you're taking forever building out the environment. Today, I'm going to show you how you can streamline this process with some fake it until you make it tips. So number one, if you're completely stumped on where to start, go to preferences, add-ons, and enable this landscape plugin that comes included with Blender. Once you've done that, you can click Shift A and now add in a landscape and then go to the bottom left and use these operator presets to always have a useful starting point for ideas, plus a ton of more in-depth customizable options for the look and shape of the environment. Tip number two is blocking. This is one of the most important tips for beginners because a lot of people focus on micro details and aspects of the environment that end up not even being seen in the final product. Blocking is pretty simple. You wanna start by dragging in another 3D viewport window from the top left. You can set one of these windows to the camera view and the other window you can use to place primitive objects in your scene by clicking Shift A. You can go to the data properties and change the scale until you have a basic little setup of what you want your environment to look like. Another bonus tip here that's gonna help you a ton. If you click on your camera and go down to the camera properties, you can go over to the viewport tab here and then check on pass part out and put that up to one if you really want to focus on just what's within the view of the camera because ultimately that's what you're rendering out. You don't want to focus energy and time to anything that's not within that view of the camera. If you want to take a step further, instead of using the blocking as placeholders, you can just use them as the actual environment itself. This is done mainly with some texturing tips. For example, I could go on a site like Quixel Bridge and download some textures that already have displacement set up for me. Next, if I go into edit and preferences and my add-ons once again i can enable the node wrangler add-on which again is included for free within blender once you've done that you just need to go to the shader editor select your shader and click Control shift t navigate to wherever you save that texture from quixel select all of the texture maps and click ok and blender does all of the hard work for you if you want that displacement to look better just make sure you add a subdivision surface modifier from here i can easily make a full sandy desert environment within like five minutes by just duplicating this rocky wall and then adding in some of those landscapes from tip one to serve as our background I can go to my environment section and add in a sky environment and then just mess around with the sun settings. I'll repeat my texturing step by using another Quixel texture to add in some sand. And then to top it all off, I'll add in a cube and go to the shader editor for the cube and place in a principal volume to act as some fog and give us some depth for the background. All of those steps took me again five to 10 minutes and it created a nice little cinematic environment all with minimal effort. I want to take a quick second here to say, if you guys want to support the channel and you're interested in Blender or After Effects plugins, check out my website link down below. I've been developing music video tools like my Director 3D plugin, which has gotten a lot of great feedback from you guys. We're also pushing towards half a million subscribers, which is insane. Thank you guys for the support. So yeah, there's my whole YouTube spiel. Back to the video. Number three is don't sweat over the background. You can use the images as planes add-on, which again, like all the other ones included with Blender, to save a ton of time trying to perfectly place details in your background. If you're using the depth of field options in your camera, your background may be blurred out anyway, so why not use an image just to save you some trouble? For this, you can look on places like Unsplashed or Pexels. If you want more control, you can also use something like Midjourney to generate whatever you want. These images can also emit light onto the 3D objects, which is really cool. You just need to go to the shader editor and make sure you plug the image node into the emission and then bump up the strength. Now our last tip is for when you want to make something at a large scale. For that, I recommend you use scattering. For scattering, you can either use a particle system or you can use a geometry node system. So with a particle system, say for example, I wanna make this low poly forest. I have some assets here like a tree, a rock, and some grass. If I want to scatter these and make a quick little forest, all I have to do is click Shift A and add in a plane. Then on that plane, I can go over to the particle settings right here. I can click to create a new particle system. And then I can scroll down to the render tab here and change the render as from halo to object. From here, you can choose your instance object. If you want, you can also do this with a collection. So I could create a new forest collection here. I could place all of my assets in that collection. And then I could select render as collection and then select the collection. Now, if I click play here, because this is an emitter, it's going to emit a ton of these things. We don't want any velocity or movement for our scattering. So let's go over to the field weights. We'll put gravity at zero. We can put all of these at zero and go to velocity, set this at zero. And then we can put the frame start to something like negative 10 and the end at negative 10. Now we can just adjust the number that we want here. You can change the seed until you get something that you'd like. 
And you can also do things like adding scale and different randomness. If I wanted to, I could add another particle system here. And let's just do this for grass because we want more of that. We'll again render as object. And then for the object, we'll select the grass, scale it up a bit, add some randomness, and then bump up the number. So there's some quick and easy scattering just with particle systems. If you want a bit more control, I recommend you look into geometry node systems. I've made a couple of geometry node systems for my Director 3D plugin. If you want to check that out, there's a link down below. There's a bunch of different templates in here for making buildings, making cities, making forests. But either way, if we just take a look at the system, obviously this may look too complex for the average beginner, but I highly recommend you learn how to put together even just a basic system. I have a tutorial showing how to set up a very basic basic geometry node scatter. On the back end, it looks complex here, but when you set this all up, you can go over to your modifiers and you have every single one of these systems that you created all just within the modifiers. So I can change the grass density. I can do things like displacing the ground. I can swap any of the models. I can change the density on the flowers, the trees. I even built in some procedural systems here. So instead of having to focus on one plane, I can click on toggle procedural and I can generate this environment just based off a grid. I've added in some custom features for my city built. I've also, I've added in some custom features for my city builder, like a checkbox to add some animated fog. These are a ton of fun to make. They're super customizable. So you can use these as a starting point for multiple different projects or large projects that require a lot of environments. Every day I see a lot of really new cool systems. For example, I made this one with simulation nodes where you can just draw an animated missile. I feel like in the future, these are going to become a lot more commonplace, not only in Blender, but also in other 3D softwares like Unreal Engine. So if you see a tutorial you like on geometry nodes or you're working on a large project that may benefit from some procedural generation, I definitely recommend you start to learn some geometry nodes. So there are my four quick tips. If you start implementing any of those into your workflow, I guarantee it's going to speed things up. If you guys enjoyed, leave a like, comment what you'd like to see next, and subscribe for more videos like this.